So. Yeah. So, you know, well, here's here's what ultimately why I bring that up. You know, I've got a lot of different things going on in my uh, my mind right now, you know, coming out of this Franklin, Tennessee event. And, um, you know, they're talking about things like AI and how to use it yep. and you know, look at all, all this different information. Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, the real estate market. I mean, right now people are talking God, the market's going to crash. The the Fed is raising rates and like all this stuff that we're hearing, right? Yep. Like if it's one thing you can learn from me is is simply um, you, you need to know your numbers. You need to be able to track your numbers. You need to build your team. Yes. You need but, but all that stuff goes in with it, right? Um, 100%. But 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 moving on from the building the team comment, you you oh, like. For real, you have got to absorb yourself with the information. You get, you got to just, you know, you know, absorb it all into your mind that you can, and, you know. And it's not necessarily driving down the road and listening to the music, like you're listening to the podcast. You're listening to, uh, like specifically this podcast, right? Yeah. Like, oh, do, you know, how many people actually sit down and actually watch Dean wave his hands and, you know, <laughs> you know, rather than doing that. The way that I listen to podcasts, Alex Hermosi, whoever, you know, yeah. I just put them on YouTube, put them right on the phone, and just yeah. let it ride. You know, that way I'm getting the audio, I'm getting the, you know, some of the mindset that I want to you know, put in. Mm-hmm. Go from there. But as you're listening to the talking heads of the world telling you that the market's going to crash, the market is, you know, doing whatever, you got to watch and understand what truly are we. Um, what are we up against? Right. You hear people losing jobs, uh, you know, market going 30% backwards on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I, I hear these this from these people that are in my mastermind groups, my small, uh, you know, accountability groups, um, you know, within our mastermind. But I'll tell you here locally, and this is speaking from, a, you know, an agent. I've been a licensed agent since 2012. Mm-hmm. I'm currently a a broker at my office, not the broker, but an associate broker. And, you know, years in the business, you start to see certain trends. Okay, interest rates go high, people freak out for a couple months, and then they're like, yeah, no big deal, we can still buy a house. We are still truly within, we're dealing with multiple offer situations, right? So the market is still reasonably warm. I'm not going to say it's hot. No, you know, the key thing is, is that you have to price things appropriately. You can't price them ten, twenty thousand dollars above what, you know, the cops say and think you're going to get 20 offers. You have to price them appropriately. And if you price them appropriately, you will get multiple offers. And, and that's what we're living right now. I mean, you know, I had, you know, a great example is, uh, you know, a house over in commerce. OK, mm-hmm. um, you know. We happen to uh, know the people that uh, flipped the house and they priced it aggressively. Like it's at the top of the market. Right. Um, but because it's done so well, so like they've done a good job. Yep. And now they've got it. They actually have a really good agent out there. Great pictures, staged the property beautifully. And, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's overall a good presentation, right? It's about marketing, right? Yes. Um, you know, 20 plus people, you know, through the open house is two hour open house. And, and next thing you know, you got multiple offers, appraisal guarantees still. So it's still happening in the market. Now that's commerce, very desirable area. Let's go all the way over to Redford. Okay. Yep. I had a deal like, like everybody knows or should know that if you are in the process of uh, getting a mortgage and you're like in underwriting, mm-hmm. don't change jobs. Okay, right. right. And I know we're talking a little bit more retail right now, but this ties in with wholesalers and, and yes. even house flippers, right? Um, because it, it all boils down to being able to deliver a properly priced product. I can say that ultimately fast, right? Property price. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, you got to be able to make sure that these things are going to sell on the back end. Yep. But without getting too scattered, it's property over in Redford. This lady quit her job ends up uh, losing her financing and we are literally like a week or so from closing on the deal and she can't 
So now it's like, well, well let's go find another buyer. And yep. as a listing agent, that's what I do. So that's uh, we put it on open market. And literally, like two days in, we got another offer. We had we had plenty of interest. So there's still yep. people looking from the hundred and fifty thousand dollar price point all the way up to three hundred. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tell you, I really am looking forward. We're going to throw a party at this one. We're finishing up a product uh, property here at the end of the month here. It's over in Farmington Hills, like the yeah. 11th Drake area. And oh, wow. um, man, that is 2,700 square foot of colonial wow. goodness. Man, this thing turns out it's, it's looking really good right now. So I'm excited to throw in that party and have you guys out there for that one. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, I actually have a buyer who... Um, I sold uh, two houses to, I sold more than two houses to him, but right now he's working on two flips, one in Shelby and one in Farmington. And I, uh, like he, these, these were complete gut jobs that he did. Mm -hmm. And he, he, that's one thing he specializes in is he like rearranges, he's a framer and he re rearranges everything. And I keep getting these updates through Snapchat from him. Yeah. Oh my God, it's crazy. I'm like, dude, you're killing it. You're killing it. That's a, that's fun. You're, you're a good encourager. I see that. Yeah. You know, you, you, you hold a, um, like, here's what I can appreciate from the, uh, you know, the conversation standpoint is that you keep it rolling. Yeah. You know, you're not one to talk over anybody else or anything else. You know, it's, you know, so I can, I, I hope that, uh, that compliment comes through well for you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Yeah, it yeah. does. It does. Um, so, so we kind of all want to know, we, we've seen the market, the way it's going right now, everybody, I, I see there's a lot of scare tactics from scare tactics that the media is putting out there and they're like, there's so many, going to be so many foreclosures, get ready for it. It's going to crash. It's going to crash. And all I hear with that is as a wholesaler, cha-ching. Cha-ching, cha-ching. And the reason why is because guess what I can do? I can use all that as leverage with the sellers when I talk to homeowners. Now, I'm not here to convince anybody to sell their house. I'm not here to convince anybody to say, hey, this is what market value is. I give people options. If they want to take that, my option, great as far as working with me if they want to take the you know the option of going on the mls i will recommend a good realtor like yourself you know uh but i give them options and go from there now the reason why i say this is because i educate them about the market now do i with everything that's being set out there sometimes i don't even have to educate them now because it's all over the news and you know and i'm like well you know we're investors we can't pay retail right you know we got to get it at a discount we got to be able to make money we got to be able to feed our families uh you know so they understand that and be like we're gonna go in here and probably spend a good forty fifty thousand dollars and you want us to make what five grand i can't do that you know yeah so i i walk through the numbers backwards with my sellers and if you do that that's also educating them you're like hey look the one right down the street sold for a hundred grand you know in order yours needs in order to be up to par for that one your yours is going to need about 30 to thirty-five thousand dollars worth of work you know uh, you know, unfortunately, after I pay, once I do that, I'm going to have to pay realtor commissions, closing costs, things like that, you know, so I do the math with them and I'm like, you know, I'm looking here just to try to make a 10% return, 10 to 15% return, mm -hmm. you know, um, things like that. So, I, uh, I mean, ha what if, what issues have you come across? with sellers coming into this market a great question um you know as you're walking me through that i you know i cringe a little bit i'm like uh one of the things that we're working on at the office is 
anchoring low, okay? Making sure that we're anchored low and, and being able to be profitable because we don't know if, if the market slides or if it plateaus or like right now we're seeing it's hot in certain cases, but um, we have to be prepared for the backslide. Got to, all right? And maybe let's talk about indicators of the backslide here in just a bit, all right? But pricing it appropriately to cause it to sell or negotiating the deal up front that you can actually close on the deal. So number one, you know you can close on it and fund the deal. You're going to be able to resell it if you're wholesaling. Um, like it's so important to just, you, you, you have to be up front with your sellers and yes. tactful and, and just, you know, there's, I mean, it's the whole language of sales. I bought a, um, you know, I'm, I'm, we're buying classes right now, okay? You know, we got Grant Cardone's thing, you know, his Unbreakable Challenge, they just did that. Um, so we've got that going on. I also bought the Sell Me This Pen Challenge from Jordan Belfort. Okay. Um, that's a really good one. Talking about earning trust in the first four seconds of a conversation, you know, or over the phone. Yep. Or in person like yeah. everybody's got these mental images in their head and then if somebody's in a hooded sweatshirt and you know there's and, and they talk like they uh you know don't have a clear voice i mean like people have images so do the things to stack the cards in your favor and, and set yourself apart from the crowd and i mean so that's those are all little, little just little things from their sales training but um what we're doing right now is was really trying to sharpen our iron and make sure that our team is going in at the right number yep. right and in you know john martinez if you're familiar with that sales training he talks about taking away at the opportunity mm -hmm. hey it doesn't look like you're really you know in a position to actually do this transaction or sell this house right now right. um you know so i'm just you know I'm not going to insult you with an offer or whatever you know however you need to word it yeah, uh, but, but I mean, there's so many different ways, and um, I'm telling you, right now, as the market progresses, it's always progressing. Yep, you're going to have to become so much better. You're going to have to become sharper as a wholesaler, as a deal finder, as a as a. Lead. And this is like a big struggle, like full transparency. This is a struggle that we got going on right now. Maybe it's mainly, you know, mostly just in our minds. But being able to identify where you truly need, and that's where your team comes into play, right? Yes. I got a partner, very, very transparent. And he's like, hey, this is where we're at, man. That's what we got to do. I'm like, I agree. Yeah, our closing percentage, our ratio of closed deals versus appointments is not where it needs to be. And you start right. to identify as you look through your books and you understand how, um, you know, what your number, what your KPIs your key yep. performance indicators, right? Your KPIs. You got to know your business. You got to track your like. There's so much that goes into it. You know, I, I'll talk about this stuff for a very, very long period of time. But um, can we shift gears out of that and get into like where the market's going and, and some of the things to watch for? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I got one. So one question that huh? I. Uh, Tracy Belinda uh, asked me was uh, this is the problem we're running into every time I see a house I'm interested in there are multiple offers over ask my issue is that uh, that plus I'm out of state a uh, if I come to Detroit she's from Miami for a week I uh, look at I'm sure she meant properties uh, do you think I'll have a better chance of obtaining a property? I'm a cash buyer looking for 40 to 60 range near Bagley. It's searching. It's like searching for a unicorn. And for this, I will tell you, uh, I will tell you, Tracy, is that um, it is very hard to find something like that in the Bagley area uh, in your range that nobody's jumping all over. My advice to you, and Dean can have his own advice on, on that. He'll answer the question in just a moment as well. Uh, but my my advice is get with not only agents. It's in addition to wholesalers. Okay. Now, you have them send you the deal first. 
you look at it to see if it meets your criteria. If it does, you have to act fast and that way you can uh, view or walk the property. Okay. Now you have to fully understand what your buy box is, what you're willing to do as far as the renovation is goes. Sometimes you, in order to get what you want, you need to do a bigger renovation. That means a lot less people are going to be interested in it. If you want a turnkey solution, that is not the range you're going to be in, not in the Bagley area.